to world news. Some crazy stuff is going on. Um, <clears throat> Infowars is Alex Jones. He says that what's going on in Charlottesville and everything that's going on lately is an information war. It's a war on information. And he let us in on, he gave some insight as to what he believes happened in Charlottesville, who he believes is behind it and everything else. And we're kind of going to dig into that. Um, he says that the mayor, CIA officials and other government officials were tweeting and reporting on CNN and NBC. And they were the first to put out the official statements about what happened in Charlottesville about the incident. And he believes it's because they were the ones behind the whole thing. Some believe that these officials paid actors to actually start riots and fill these movements. Websites like Crowds on Demand make it easy to gather people for a cause or for no cause at all. I actually just found out about this. This website, CrowdsOnDemand.com, check it out. You can literally look for, you know, protests, rallies. You can get people to, you can get crowds to come to your protests. And they probably have nothing, no idea as to what's actually going on. So you can actually buy this kind of stuff. And the name that's been circulating the media in this incident um, the past few days is Brendan Gilmore. He's a genocide expert, actually. Um, he was apparently a key orchestrator behind the racial motivated mob violence occurring in Charlottesville, Virginia, um, according to Alex Jones and a few other people as well, actually, according to Russia, most importantly. Russian intelligence experts have previously blamed him for being a central figure behind the genocidal fighting between Muslims and Christian militaries in the Central African Republic. So let's, give in, let's just get into a little brief history on Brennan Gilmore so you understand. The man, this man is the one who captured um, and posted that um, the video of the vehicle hitting that crowd, running into the crowd of people at the rally. Um, he posted it onto his Twitter account. He was known as a CIA deep cover operative stationed by the Obama, Obama regime, or regime, I'm sorry, as a deputy chief of mission to the U.S. Embassy in the Central African Republic. He worked exclusively with the Muslim rebel group Seleka, and that was um, they were successful in the overthrowing of the nation's Christian majority controlled government. That was March 24th of 2013. All of that, though, what happened with uh, the Muslim rebel group overthrowing Christians, that caused a Christian mil military uh, backlash of genocidal proportions known today as the Forgotten Conflict. The reason why they gave it that name, the Forgotten Conflict, is because it's actually being ignored by the West. And I would agree with that because this is the first I'm ever hearing of that, the, for for the Forgotten Conflict. I didn't even know that existed. Gilmore returned to the U.S., um, upon Trump's election victory in 2016, last year. And then he became the chief of staff for his former Central African Republic boss, Tom Periello. Tom Periello had launched a bid to become Democratic Party governor of Virginia, but he lost just a few months ago in June. So just a few months ago, around that time, Gilmore left the uh, campaign and became an advisor to the Democratic Party mayor of Charlottesville, Virginia, Michael Signer. Michael Signer is known for declaring his city as a capital of the year resistance against Trump in February 2017. So here's where it gets a little interesting. Thank you for bearing with me through all of this. Between the dates of August 6th and 11th, so just a few weeks ago, days ago, SVR, which is Russia's foreign um, intelligence service, they noted that Gilmore had numerous meetings and telephonic exchanges with Mayor Signer, Michael Signer, and former Obama supporter Jason Kessler. Interestingly enough, though, now, Jason Kessler is being known as a relatively newcomer to the white nationalist scene. And he was apparently the leader of the pro-fascist side in Charlottesville. Jason Kessler actually has experience as a former assignment editor for the anti-Trump fake news propaganda with CNN, and he's also well-versed in how to create a media spectacle. So, what does all of this tell us? Basically, Jason Kessler led his pro-fascist forces on a Unite the Right march while Mayor Michael Signer ordered all of his city's police forces to stand down and not interfere with any either side. So all of this was going on while Gilmore, who seemingly came out of nowhere, was able to appear at the perfect time with a camera in hand to capture and witness and record 
a pro-fascist supporter ramming into the crowd of communists. Wow, that's a lot. He was actually interviewed by CNN and every other anti-Trump fake news media outlet in America, too, these past few days since it's happened. And it seems that Trump doesn't find any of this uh, to be amusing. His Department of Justice has ordered a top Democratic Party anti-Trump website to immediately turn over the identities of 1.3 million communist agitators, causing chaos throughout America. Whew. So is that what this is all about? It, it, it makes you beg the question, is that what all of this is about? Was this white nationalist rally used as a ploy to sniff out communists in our country? Will Trump really find a way to neutralize the communists, you know, the communist thinkers in our country? And is a war beginning right now among us, right now as we speak, between us? I don't know, but things are definitely getting crazy. Things are getting hectic. Um, I really encourage you all to look a little bit further into Jason Kessler, Mayor Michael, Mayor Michael Signer, and Brennan Gilmore, the three people that seem to be, you know, everyone seems to be talking about them and their connections between this Charlottesville riot and how it may have been staged. Um, definitely look further into all of that. I'm not sure, but it does look like the deep state is doing a little bit of craziness. If they were behind this, then we do have to say we have to open our eyes. We definitely have to open our eyes. The first time in a very long time that we're hearing about white nationalists um, doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me, of course, now that Trump is in office. But um, it does scare me a little bit, just like I'm sure it does you. So please, everyone, do your research. Keep on looking out and keep on, you know, fighting that good fight. We need to find the correct information and we need to know what's going on in our governments. And if these people are responsible for all of this chaos, then what's next? What's next? How do we go about correcting these mistakes of these people? And what's next? <laughs> That's all with world news. We're gonna move on here to our universe, our final to um, topic here. Artif artificial intelligence expert Steve Chien, he speaks on NASA's plans for artificial intelligence on Mars. Now, NASA plans to use AI on Mars, and that actually shouldn't be much of a surprise considering that artificial intelligence and missions have been used both on Earth and on Mars already. <laughs> actually, Facebook recently shut down an experiment because two AI bots became, began communicating in a shorthand language instead of English. And many perceive that as, you know, the bots coming up with their own secret language. But NASA Jet uh, Population Laboratories' Steve Chin says that the reality is a lot more subtle than that. The bots were not rewarded for using English, so they just sought out the most efficient route possible to communicate with one another. He explains that NASA takes robot safety very seriously and that NASA astronauts, they work alongside Robonaut 2, which is a simple machine that can flip switches and do menial tasks. But NASA plans to put even more intelligent robots on Mars to help astronauts find the most interesting locations to survey when they're there. For those of us who haven't thought about this already, there are robots right now, artificial intelligence robots right now working in space as we speak. NASA's Mars rovers are already equipped with AI, which makes some decisions um, independently. They make decisions independently. This is useful um, since communication between rover and earth might take actually 20 minutes to do, do due to vast distance So it would take a very long time to communicate. It's not just Mars either though NASA used AI on its earth orbiting one satellite which just completed its mission earlier this year after operating um, Since 2003 it's called the Adenomous science craft experiment ASE and it's helped scientists look for interesting events on Earth's surfaces like volcanoes meaning that it could send out alerts to the public faster than humans working on the surface. <clears throat> so basically the sky is a huge place. It's a big place. You might not see thousands, you know, you may see thousands of things out there when you're looking. Um, and before these experiments were, you know, available, according to Chen, scientists arbitrarily just picked 50 things to look at. But now we have AI, and so now they can look at 50 objects and the AI instruments determined what are the most interesting ones. So they're not wasting time or resources, they feel. Speaking specifically on the Mars 2020 rover, it's expected to depart for the Red Planet in three years. Not only will the rover be clever enough to choose an interesting 
um, target, but also to pick the best approach for scanning it and obtaining information relative or relevant to researchers. Mars 2020 could even change its schedule of tasks on the fly if it finishes something ahead of time, along, allowing scientists to squeeze the most that they can out of each mission. You know, and other projects really do remain um, in the proposal stage, you know, but there are a lot of exciting things happening in the world of in artificial intelligence. And you can actually check out more things on space.com um, about this. But I want to know what you think. Is this a positive thing, right? Um, should we be concerned or worried? Should we be worried about the rise of artificial intelligence like Elon Musk believes we should? Um, I don't know. You tell me. And thank you guys so much for joining us. So, so much. It was a great show. You can check us out at Believe.love for more as well as YouTube.com forward slash Believe Loves You. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash Believe Loves You. Feel free to email us with questions, concerns, topic ideas, anything at show at Believe.love. I'm Vanessa and you have a wonderful evening.